Good morning, spaceman. Good morning, Space Operations Delta. I'm your captain, Captain Collins. Welcome back to X4 Cradle of Humanity. Yesterday, we already talked about the, that ship in the middle, the Asgard, the new battleship. If you have not seen this, a video is on the top right corner. Today, we want to talk about all the capital ships in Cradle of Humanity. As you can see, everyone is gathered here and we will take a closer look on everyone in there. So let's jump right into the game. And let me say that this is still a pre-release beta version. The game will release on March 16th, 2021 on Steam and GOG and you can pre-order it right now if you want to. Let me move to the site and then we will get everything starting with, of course, the Asgard. The Asgard is uh, the battleship, the new battleship uh, from the Terrans, which is uh, the biggest ship that you can now fly in the game. Like I said in the video before, it has got new weapons on board. It has got the XL main battery, which is a beam laser coming from the middle of that ship, a 14 kilometer range, more than 10,000 megawatts weapon output, really, really big. But take a look at the video that I did just for the Asgard itself. Today, we want to start with the Tokyo. The Tokyo is the carrier and you will be maybe pleased that you know this design already. The carrier Tokyo is a straight out of X3. This is this, almost the same design, a little bit uh, enhanced for the X4 version of it. And this carrier can carry one single M-Class ship at the back. You can see that here. And the cargo bay itself for the ships are hidden in between here. As you can see, there we have a view right into the cargo bay. And as you see in the cargo bay, you have a room for 18 S-Class ships. So you have landing pads for 18 S-Class ships. And what's really cool, you have two turrets inside of the cargo bay or the ship bay in this uh, case. That's a really cool addition, even though they are even forward facing, if you want to call them forward facing, they can shoot out the front. Ships that want to fly in have three different options to fly in. They can come from the front, they can come from left or right. And that's really, really cool. Here we go into the buying menu to have a little closer look to the Tokyo, the carrier itself. The Tokyo carrier can have up to three XL shields. You have one down here, a two up here, which is really good. It gives a lot of shield strength. And you do have eight turret groups with a total of 28 M-class turrets. So there is one group which is really large. That's the slot two group where you can see at the front there, you got 11 there. And in a total, you have 28 medium class turrets. You have absolutely no L class turrets, so that's a little bit short for that ship, but it is good at defending themselves against S and M class ships. Really, really good. You have a one single XL engine and a crew of 201 personnel here. The design looks very, very unique, like they came up in X3 with that design. So that's the Tokyo Carrier. Let's have a look at uh, two other capital ships in here. And you will be pleased that we're talking about two different L-class attack ships. So we got two different destroyers and let's start with the Osaka. The Osaka is a L-class destroyer with two forward-facing main batteries on it and a few turrets at the top and at the bottom. This is the lower tier destroyer, if you want to call it like that. There is another destroyer that we want to talk about in a second, but just keep in mind this here, low tier destroyer. Let's have a look at the ship buying menu for this one. 
So the Osaka comes with a two engines at the back. Then you have a three L-class shield slots, which look pretty cool. Every single one for itself looks very, very sleek. You can see the difference in their design. They look very, very cool. After that, you do have, like I said, two main batteries uh, facing the front, one left and one right there. At the far right and the far left side, you got some turrets. You have in total three L-class turrets, two at the top, one at the lower side here. They all three can also forward face if you take a look at that. So if you're facing something from the front, Three turrets can shoot and the two main batteries can also shoot. In addition to that, you do have 10 M-Class uh, turrets, which are put everywhere around the ship. So you got four on top here, you got one back there, you got one more back at the lower side and another four here. So this thing is capable of defending itself and it's also capable of attacking pretty good. But like I said, this is the lower tier destroyer. And now let's have a look at the higher tier destroyer, which is waiting there. And this is the Sin. The Sin here is the higher class or the higher tier destroyer with way more guns. You do have three forward facing main batteries. You do have four L-Class uh, turrets at the top and another four L-Class turrets at the lower side. That means you have eight, in total eight L-Class turrets and three forward-facing weapons. This thing is massive and you can see by its looks. I mean, this looks like a battleship. This is made for battle. Just take it and make some battles with it. It looks so cool, so damn cool. If there is a single downside to this, then it is just a single S-Class landing spot there, but it's perfectly fine to land your own personal ship on it and have it there sitting whenever you need it. Just take a look at it. This thing here is beautiful. Beautiful. Whenever you find a good pose or something, just uh, press pause on the YouTube video, but this is maybe the best. So also, let's take a look at the buying menu for this one. So here we go. The Sin Destroyer, like I said, you have four L-Class turrets at the top, four L-Class turrets at the bottom. You have a single engine. You do have a three L-Class shields, which is pretty good. You have the three forward-facing main batteries, as you can see here. Let's equip these. Very, very cool. Massive damage output there. If you take the sustained damage of these three, you are over 6,000 megawatts of a sustained weapon power there, just with the main batteries. I can't even imagine how big the engine should be just to powering these weapons. And then for the turrets, like I said, you do have the eight L-class turrets. And then as an addition, you do have four M-class turrets, which are just there, I guess, to defeat some S-class fighters which are swiveling around you. But like the Asgard 2, this one here is a massive power force. You want to have it in your fleet to destroy the large targets and maybe an Osaka, which is a little bit more agile and do have smaller weapons to defeat smaller targets like S or M class ships around these two heavy fighters. Next thing that we're going to take a look at very, very short is the Kyushu. The Kyushu is the builder of the Terrans and as you can see, there is nothing more than I need to tell you about the Kyushu. That's the design we already know. They just put a new name on it so that you can distinguish it from other ships. From here on, we go to the trader. The trader is the Okinawa. The Okinawa looks very, very cool if you ask me. That, that's a cool looking trader. You have the trade containers or the storage containers at the front. You do have Again, is something that is like a habitat ring, the Terran habitat ring there, even with a landing spot. So let's take a look at the equipment of uh, the Okinawa. 
The Okinawa comes like a lot of these ships with one a single engine. So it means it's fast enough as a large trader. But the addition of 4.0 where the traders and all the large capital ships and so on just jump through the jump gate by teleporting through it, this thing will get really fast. You have two L-class shield generators, which is pretty good for a trader if you ask me. And you have just M-class turrets. In a total eight of these around the ship everywhere. And also with the Okinawa, you have one S-class dock. Just like the Sin, you can land your own ship on that trader. Container storage in this case is 25,000 cubic meters, which I guess puts it into the high middle ground of all the L-class traders. So it's a decent ship to consider. Next capital ship we have are the miners that I don't find at the moment. Oh, there is one. <laughs> the Hokkaido or the Hokkaido. The Hokkaido really looks sleek. I mean, this thing here looks like a boat. If you ask me, this could also run on the ocean. This, this is really cool. That's the mineral version. You can even see some differences in the model for the mineral and the gas version. We take a look at the gas version of the Hokkaido. You will see that there is a little bit of a difference in uh, the tanks that it used. So back to the mineral version, you see that there are uh, these storage containers. The Hokkaido gas is using some storage tanks. Going into the buying menu of this one, you can see there's not much to it at the front. There is just some space for <laughs> cargo. As you can see underneath, very well hidden there. Very cool design if you ask me. Then you have the single engine there. But what's good for the mineral miner and for the gas miner is that you have one L-class turret. For mineral mining, of course, you would take a mining turret, which is amazingly big. That's, that's a big mining turret. And also you got M-class slots also. Eight in total around the ship. So this is also pretty good if it's just staying in the middle of a asteroid belt. Shield generators, you got one L-class shield generator, so it's a little bit low on shield health, but that's okay for mineral miners. And a crew is a 33 persons, that's perfectly fine. The miner can hold up to 38,000 storage, solid storage in this case. A hull is at 24,000. But we'll take a closer look when we compare all these ships together. Let's take a short look at the gas miner. And the gas miner is also equipped with a 38,000 uh, liquid storage. In this case, liquid storage. And all the other things are basically the same. Although I have to see that there is a difference here. And this is basically because maybe it's the beta version. You can see there is the M-class turret missing at the back and you have a weird thing here with containers. Maybe they are still working on this. As I said, this is work in progress. You can see this on the top right corner. Still not done yet. So the Hokkaido mineral miner with two S-class docks, an L-class turret, and the Hokkaido gas miner without an L-class turret, but also with two S-class docks. And the next one already seen in the trailer is uh, the Honshu class. This is an auxiliary ship with the sail that you already saw in the trailer, like I said, this is originating from a classical Japanese sailing ship design. And I think it's a really, really special design to do as a spaceship. The Honshu itself, like I said, is an auxiliary class ship with a 2M class docks and a 6S class docks. So it is almost as good as a carrier or even you could call this auxiliary ship also like your light carrier. Let's go into the build menu of uh, that one. There we have it. That's the Honshu class. As you can see, you have a good turret placement. You have some at the top, some at the middle. 
and some at the back of the ship and even at the top side and the lower side. So uh, this thing uh, can defend itself in every single direction and from every single side uh, the threat is coming from. We do have a single XL engine because auxiliary ship is an XL ship. We have a 1XL shield, which gives us a shield strength of 160,000, which is not very much. Could have maybe added two shields at least. And then we have the M-class turrets. A total of 14 turrets. The container storage with 43,000 is pretty good as an auxiliary ship. So that way you can have a lot of repair material on your ship. Let's compare some ships uh, together. Let's compare, for example, the battleship and the two destroyers against each other. There we go. There we have all the new capital battleships or destroyers. So the new attack ships one by one. I just selected the ship itself and selected the high preset. So I didn't do that much customization. But you can see with the hull, the Osaka is a little bit short on the hull as the Sin. The Sin is the higher tier destroyer in this case. They are just rocking L-class shields. And the Asgard is rocking XL shields. But Osaka and Sin do have the same shield amount. So that's pretty good. Osaka and Sin can almost take the same amount of hits. Group shields, the Osaka is a little bit low on that one uh, compared to the Sin. Also, the recharge rate is a little bit slower. Then we have the burst weapon output. So the output when every weapon shoots at the same time. We do have the 17,000 on the Asgard, of course, the highest. We do have 6,000 on the Osaka and 9,000, almost 9,400 on the Sin, which is very good. Like, keep in mind, it's three main batteries on the Sin. And the three main batteries perform a little bit better if you see the sustained weapon output over time than the Asgard do with the big laser. The average turret output is, of course, the best for the Asgard. The Asgard with its 16 L-class turrets, the Sin with its 8 L-class turrets, and the Osaka with its 3 L-class turrets. You can really see the amount that it's going half to here and half to here. The Osaka is the most agile one in almost all the things here. Although the strafe speed for the Sin is very high. That's... Pretty cool to see, even the yaw, pitch and roll, the Osaka and the Sin are almost comparable against each other. Way better than the Asgard, of course. We have just on the Asgard an M-class dog. We have S-class dogs, a three on the Asgard, one and one on Osaka and Sin. Crew is a little bit less. Missiles are the, uh, the same for Osaka and Sin. So there you go. These are the three attack class ships. And now let's have a look at the other three ships. So, so the miner, the trader, and the carrier. Just have them here to take a look at their stats. There we have the stats of the carrier, the trader, and the miner. The carrier, of course, has got a good hull strength. It's an XL class ship, so this is very good. Shield, it has got one less XL shield than the Asgard, Okinawa, and Hokkaido of course, do have L-class shields. Let's take a look at the speeds. All of these ships, I have to admit, are very, very slow. They're not even getting to 100 meters per second. Maybe you can advance that with a different type of engines you use for these shields. But in this case, like I said, I didn't do any good customization. I just clicked the high preset. So that way you can see the best Terran equipment that you can get on these ships. You can get a little bit better by, for example, taking Paranid engines. But in this case, we're looking just at Terran equipment, nothing else. And just for comparison reasons, there we have the auxiliary ship, the Honshu. You have 157,000 hull plus 161,000 shield. That's not uh, too much, but of course, it's an auxiliary ship. It should stay behind and should not engage in fights. So that for it has got a decent amount of hit points that it can take. Speed is really bad with this one. So maybe if you have a Anshu in your fleet, this will slow down the complete fleet. An Asgard, for example, is doing almost twice the travel speed. 
your pitch roll is the lowest in uh, the complete fleet or would be the lowest in the complete fleet. And as I said, there is absolutely no M ship capacity. But maybe this could change. It's still the pre released version. So maybe they see the issue there and change the M ship capacity so that you at least have, for example, four or six M ships that you can take with your Honshu. So these are the stats for the other three ships. And with that, I say thank you very much for watching. This was very, very cool taking a look at all the capital ships which are in the game. The next time we will have a look at all the other ships, S-Class and M-Class ships. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. By the way, we will take a look at that already tomorrow. So be there. Thank you so much. I'm Captain Collins. We'll see you again tomorrow.